What up y'all, today we are talking about how to use a really powerful feature in Premiere Pro called proxies. And I am so excited about this topic because it can make a massive, massive difference in how fast you can edit. But before I tell you exactly how they work, I want to tell you the situations in which you might want to use them so that you know whether you should care about them or not. One, Premiere Pro is slow and laggy on your computer and you would prefer that it were fast instead. Two, you often use multi-camera editing, but Premiere struggles to playback footage from so many cameras at once. Three, you wanna be able to edit on different devices without a lot of hassle. So let's say you wanna edit on your desktop computer at home and on your laptop computer when you're at the coffee shop and you don't even wanna have to bring that external hard drive, well, I got you. Four, you wanna edit on your laptop sometimes, but its processor is not as swole as the one on your desktop computer and that makes it hella slow, which you don't like. And five, you wanna be able to collaborate with a teammate who's in a different location, but they don't have the original video files for the project, and you don't wanna wait forever for those giant files to upload or for them to get a physical hard drive that you mail to them. If you're in any of these situations, then you're gonna to wanna to know about proxies, so keep watching. So first, what is a proxy file? We need to start with the fact that in video editing, sometimes the footage that we get straight from our camera is very difficult to work with. So it's too big to move around or Premiere struggles to play it back without dropping frames and making things choppy. And all of that just messes up our momentum when we're editing. So like if I play this 1080p footage that I got from my camera back in Premiere Pro and I play it at normal speed, then Premiere is doing fine here. We've got no choppiness, you know, especially because I've got the playback resolution set low to one fourth over here in the program monitor. And so things are doing just fine. But it's when I start fast forwarding, when I start going really fast, that's when we're starting to have some issues, even at this low resolution. And if I'm trying to preview a bunch of clips on my timeline, then this is definitely gonna slow me down. So to fix this situation, you can take all those source files that are so hard to work with, and you can make a copy of them. But you're not gonna create an exact copy. You're going to create a copy that's in a form that is easier and faster to edit with. And then while you're editing, you're going to temporarily sub in those easier, faster files so that you can get stuff done. Those substitute files are called proxy files because a proxy has the authority to represent somebody else when they can't show up. And in this case, our OG footage cannot show up because it's causing us issues. And so the proxy files are representing our OG source files. So let's say we made some proxy files for this footage that was choppy from earlier. I could go over to this button here called toggle proxies. And I added that to the program monitor by clicking the button editor over here and then finding that toggle proxies button and dragging it down here so it stays there permanently. So now if I click this, that's gonna tell Premiere to use those proxy files and oh snap, look at my timeline. Playback is so smooth and buttery. We ain't having any issues like before. I'm gonna be flying through this edit and then whenever I'm done, I'm gonna go up here to file export and Premiere is going to automatically relink our source footage instead of using those substitute proxy files. Okay, so I said earlier that we use proxy files as video editors because the footage that we get straight out of our camera is too difficult to edit with. But like, how does that even make sense? Like, what does our camera think we're gonna be doing with these video files if not editing them? Well, there are two big factors that affect why these video files are hard to work with. And the first reason is the size of our camera files. So as technology has advanced when it comes to cameras, we've got video files that have bigger and bigger resolutions. So they got more and more pixels. So we've got 4K, 8K, 12K. And we've also got camera files that have bigger and bigger bit rates. That is the number of bits of data that are packed into each one of those video files. Both of those things, resolution and bitrate, cause bigger video file sizes. And of course that's bad because it's hard to move those giant video files between devices or between people. And so to fix this, video editors often create proxy files of their big media footage, but those proxies are at a lower resolution and a lower bitrate, so they might be a little pixelated, but they will get the job done. The second reason that camera files are hard to work with is compression. So compression means you're pressing down on something until it takes up less space, right? And video files have a lot of information, like we said earlier, but there's only so much space in cameras to store that information because we've just got these little cards to store our videos on. So that means that your cameras will very often add a lot of compression to your video files to make those files small enough to store on this tiny little SD card. And to compress your footage, 
footage, your camera is taking shortcuts. So if it needs to save this video clip, it's like, all right, we've got seven frames here to save, but really the only part of these frames that's moving is this little section right here. So that is the only part that's different between these frames is this little area right here. And since everything else about these frames is the exact same, why don't we just, for the first frame, we'll save the whole scene, right? And then for all the other frames afterwards, we just need to save this little tiny section because it's all that's changing and then somebody else can figure all this out later. And that is a really awesome thing. These shortcuts, this compression is awesome when you are capturing footage with your camera because you know it's gonna take up less space to store on your SD card than if your camera recording all that redundant data onto every single frame, right? The problem is when you take that really compressed footage and you put it into Premiere to go and edit it, Premiere is the one that has to put it all back together. So it has to decode the compression to play it back. And of course that makes Premiere work much harder and it requires much more processing power. And if your computer doesn't have it, or if you try to shuttle through your footage way too fast in Premiere, then you're gonna have issues. The playback's gonna be choppy and it's just gonna be infuriating. And so compression is the second reason that the files from our camera can be hard to edit with. And so in order to fix this, we can create proxy versions of those difficult to work with files, but we can put them in a form that's less compressed. So a form where we add back all of the information, the full info to every frame. So Premiere doesn't need to do all this decoding. Now we're not adding image quality to the footage. We're just making it easier to be decoded or to be played back. But because we're putting full information into every single frame, that means that footage that has less compression is going to have a bigger file size. And even though it might seem like a video file that has a bigger size is going to be harder for Premiere to play back, just take a look at this. Here I've got a proxy file that is less compressed and it's got a much bigger file size than our original footage but if I try to play that back in Premiere then it's still going to play back super smooth super buttery even if I really push it and go super fast forward and that's because the file has less compression and when we compare that back to how choppy that original really compressed footage was you can really tell the difference all right, now let's talk about how you actually make proxy files. So first thing you gotta do is you gotta know your priorities. So you gotta know, is it more important for you to have a super small proxy file that's really easy to send across the world to your teammate who's editing this project with you? If that's the case, then you wanna have a lot of compression in your proxy file. Or is it more important for you to have a blazing fast proxy file and you don't care how big it is because you got storage space, then you're gonna want to have a proxy file that has less compression. I want you to understand this because there's no one size fits all proxy. You need to know how much compression is right for the proxy file that's gonna fit your needs. All right, so to tell Premiere how much compression to put in your proxy file, you're going to need to pick a codec for that proxy file. And maybe you've heard the word codec, but you're like, I don't know exactly what that means. Well, we're gonna fix that today. Codec is short for compression, decompression, or coder decoder. So a video's codec is like this set of instructions that determine how a video is going to be coded when it's recorded into a file and how much compression it's going to get. So the codec is like the boss of the video, you know? It's barking out orders, it's saying how things are gonna get done. So it might say, anytime there's redundant info in a frame, we're just gonna skip it. Or it might say, not gonna work. We're gonna need all the info for every frame. A video's codec also gives Premiere the set of instructions that it needs to decode a compressed video so that it can be played back when you're editing. So if a video is compressed, then Premiere is looking at that codec to figure out that, hey, I need to go all the way back to this frame to find the info for this frame. Now let's go into Premiere and make our proxy files and look at your codec options. So one of the easiest ways to make proxies in Premiere is when you're first making your project. So we're gonna go up here to File, New Project, and then we've got our Project Settings window, which should look familiar to you. But we're gonna go over to this third tab that we haven't touched yet called the Ingest tab. So just like when we ingest food into our bodies, this Ingest tab is for when Premiere ingests footage that we import into our project. So when you go over here and you check this ingest box, you are telling Premiere, hey, every time I import footage into this project, I want you to create a copy of that footage based on the settings that I pick here. So we can create identical copies. I don't know why you would wanna do that, but you can. We can transcode our footage and make copies that are high res and replace our original source footage. But of course, in this case, we wanna create proxy files or temporary substitute files. Okay, now in the proxy dropdown menu in the ingest tab, we've got options. And the first thing we have to decide here is the codec. We've got four codec options. 
So first codec option here is H.264. This is if you want a small file size. So if you want to send that file across the world to your remote teammate, or if you want to work on a laptop that has barely any storage, this is the codec you want to pick. H.264 is a highly compressed codec, so your camera might use this codec. The internet loves this codec. You know, if you remember back to our export settings lesson, this was the codec we used for those presets. Now, which one of these H.264 proxy options should you pick? Well, you might think that if you pick the lowest resolution, that that's gonna give you a dramatically smaller file. That was not the case when I tested it. So I made a proxy file in all of these resolution options, and no matter which one I picked, they were all about half the size of the original footage. I'm also going to share a custom H.264 proxy preset with you that got that file size down to a tenth of the size. So that's coming up. The second codec option here is ProRes. This is the one you're gonna to wanna to pick if you want fast performance. You're also gonna want this if you're doing multi-camera editing or if you're on a computer like an old laptop that doesn't have a lot of processing power. Now, because ProRes is a low compression codec, you need to have storage space because these files are going to be bigger. And that's also why I would suggest selecting a low resolution preset. Okay, the other two codec options here I would not touch. Now we're gonna tell Premiere where to save our proxy files. I think it's easiest just to save all the proxy files in one folder in case you ever have any issues and Premiere needs to find them, they're in one spot. Okay, now I'm gonna add some footage to this project. So let's create a footage bin and drag some nice big 4K files into it. And as soon as we did that, you'll see that Premiere started sending proxy jobs over to Adobe Media Encoder, which is going to automatically launch because that is where your proxy files are gonna be encoded. While that's being done though, we can keep working in Premiere. The proxies will still continue to be created in the background. And if we wanted to keep tabs on the progress without leaving Premiere, we could go up here to Window and then select progress and that's going to bring up a panel which shows us how our proxies are doing and then any proxies that Premiere creates will have the original file name plus underscore proxies at the end of it we could also go over to the project panel and up here where we have our metadata this headings bar we could right click here and then we could search for proxy and I'm going to check here and that's going to add a column in our project panel for proxy status then I'll drag that column next to my file names so that I can make sure that every one of these video files has a proxy attached to it. And since all the proxies are ready to use, now I'm gonna go over to the program monitor. I'm gonna go to this button, I'm gonna click the toggle proxies button on. That's gonna tell Premiere to use my proxy files now that I'm editing, which is going to make everything really fast. So I can go over to my project panel now, open up a bin of footage, put it in icon view, and I can preview these clips by hovering over them super fast. There's no stuttering. I can go on the timeline, shuttle through footage really fast, and I'm just gonna feel like a boss. Now there are times when you don't wanna have your proxies turned on when you're editing. So when you want Premiere to use your original source footage. So if you're doing color correction, for example, or if you're using a really detailed effect like warp stabilizer, then Premiere is going to do a better job analyzing your footage and knowing how to apply effects to it when it has the original source footage that's full resolution or that's full bit rate so that it has a broader range of colors and a finer degree of detail. Now, you can also create proxies after you have already imported footage into your project. So to do that, you're gonna go into your project and select all the media that you wanna proxy. So this is gonna be the video files because audio files are so small that you don't need to proxy them. And let's say you've got video files sorted into a bunch of different bins like I do here, and you don't wanna have to go into every single bin to select your video files because you're lazy. To get around this, uh, you could go up here and click this folder with the magnifying glass in it. And this is gonna make a search bin to find all of the video files in your project at once. And so this is a custom bin that Premiere is gonna make for you based on whatever filters you choose here. And so I am gonna tell Premiere to find all of the media in this project that have a media type of movie. And that's gonna locate all the video files and it's created this custom bin. It's got all of the video files in our project in it, which is really convenient. So we can select them all, then we can right click and now we're going to select proxy and then create proxies. And this window is a little different than the one we saw earlier in the ingest tab, but if you want the H.264 codec for your proxies, you're gonna click H.264 for the format, or if you want ProRes for your codec, you're going to pick QuickTime for the format. Finally, I just wanna point out that if at any time during this workflow, you have trouble linking a proxy file, you can always right click a clip detach any proxies that were made, delete them from your computer, and then create the proxies again if you need to. 
All right, now I'm gonna share with you my custom proxy presets that are labeled here, so it's easy for you to remember which one to use. So for ProRes, that's for fast performance bigger files. And then my H.264 preset is going to give you a file size that's smaller than Adobe's preset. And by the way, I did that by lowering the bit rate for those proxy files. So lower bit rate means fewer bits of data recorded means smaller files. All right, to install these presets, first you're going to download them from the resources below. Then you're going to launch Adobe Media Encoder and you're going to go to the preset menu and select import. From there, you're gonna select the preset files that you just downloaded and you're gonna click open. And now that they're imported into Adobe Media Encoder, we're going to right click one of them and we're going to select reveal preset file. This is gonna show you where Adobe Media Encoder just saved those imported preset files and they're gonna be buried in some Adobe folder that's deep down on your device, but we wanna know where that is because we're about to import these into Premiere. So I'm actually just gonna drag this presets folder over here to my favorites so it's really easy to find. Now we're going to launch Premiere, then we're gonna to go to File, Project Settings, and Ingest Settings. Then we're gonna click the Ingest box and select Create Proxies and then click add ingest preset. Then we're gonna go over to our presets folder that we just bookmarked here. And from the presets that we just imported into Adobe Media Encoder, we're gonna pick the two that have the word ingest in them. And we gotta do that one at a time. Now the proxy presets are imported into Premiere and even if we don't wanna use them right now, we can just uncheck this box here and click okay, but they will still be ready for us to use when we want to and they'll show up in the proxy options from now on. Lastly, if you wanna use those small proxies that are really easy to move so that you can work on two different devices or so that you can work with a remote collaborator, then make sure you watch the next video in this lesson where I'm gonna give you step-by-step -step workflows for that. Also, this lesson is part of my course that teaches you how to make videos. And so if you're interested in learning more about that, you can head to marybetsy.com. All right, y'all, that is it for this video on proxies. I would really appreciate it if you gave it a like and a comment below. And if you're interested in more video editing or filming tutorials that really go deep like this, then subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.